Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Ready Precision. In this video, we are taking a look at a question that comes up a lot more uh, these days, and that is why I should be using a Jace 9000 instead of a Jace 8000. Jace 8000 is still available and still will be available for a little while now, um, but there's some drawbacks if you choose to use it going forward here. Um, for a few different reasons. Plus, there's some quality of life changes that were made in the design of the 9000 that I think uh, will make your life a little bit easier and maybe will um, cover your butt a little bit if uh, mistakes are made. Um, so we'll look at that as well. And then obviously some uh, upgrades in the actual hardware that's being used inside the 9000 that um, will make it easier for you to uh, do bigger jobs and use some newer uh, software technology things that Tritium has coming down the pike. So let's jump into a PowerPoint presentation now and take a look at exactly what each of those things are. All right, so why would we upgrade? As I mentioned, so three big points here on why you would switch to a 9000 or why you should be using the 9000 instead of the 8000 going forward here. First of the, which um, is there's some changes in the way that it handles backups locally that will cover your butt quite a bit um, here as you're making changes and that kind of thing. And if you're not good about making sure you do backups yourself as you're making those changes. Obviously, hardware changes happen with the 9000, uh, CPU changes, uh, flash memory, Ethernet, all that kind of stuff. There's some changes made there, so we'll talk about that. And then obviously, the big elephant in the room is the support support on the software that will be supported on the 9000 or excuse me the 8000 uh and then the hardware support how long our hardware support is going to continue on here for the 8000 so let's jump in first with uh backup handling so if you are at all familiar with the 8000 um, you know that the station runs directly on the micro SD card. There was no real flash memory in the uh, JACE itself outside of, you know, some very basic stuff that was used for the operating system and that kind of thing. Um, backups could be manually initiated to a USB stick in uh, the USB port on the top of the 8000. Uh, but nothing that was able to be done automatically. Um, and obviously you need to have a USB stick and remember to do it manually. Not exactly an ideal situation with the way that it was handled in the 8000. On the 9000, things um, were slightly re-architected. So now the station runs on local flash storage that is on the Jace 9000 itself. We'll talk about that here in a little bit when we talk about the hardware changes. Um, but there is flash storage built into the 9000 now. And in addition, we're still keeping that SD card slot and the SD card um, by default with the 9000. Because of that, now the station is running on that local flash. And then the SD card is used as a backup for our station itself. This is automated. It happens automatically every day at 2 a.m. The station will automatically grab a backup of the whole thing. Um, including software and lower end things that you might not get in a normal station backup. And then you can also initiate this backup manually from the shell. should also mention that uh, restores can be initiated from the shell as well to make this easier. So if you had a, a 9000 die, you could move a SD card from your old 9000 to a newer 9000 and be up and running pretty quickly here with that um, manually initiated uh, restore. So that is the backup handling changes. On the performance side, the actual hardware itself, you can see main point, the thing that you'll hear the most, and if you've watched our video on the 9000 overall um, when it first was released, the big change is that the processor was uh, significantly upgraded. We're now using a quad-core processor. It's 1.6 gigahertz as opposed to the single gig, uh, one gigahertz that the uh, single-core processor was on the 8000. So quite a bit more horsepower just on the CPU side, the processing power side of the 9000. So now it's using Ubuntu Linux as opposed to QNX, which was used on the 8000. Um, That'll allow them to do a few more things in the future here that we'll see with uh, new features and such. Uh, memory was doubled from the 8000. 
uh, you now have that onboard storage that I talked about. So that's eight gig. It's the same amount of storage that you now get on your SD card. So they match each other. Um, and our SD card on the 8,000 was only four gig. So we're twice as many um, gig on our storage for the SD card in addition to that new onboard storage. We still have the same uh, RS-45 backups, or um, excuse me, RS-45 ports. We no longer have that USB backup port on the top of the Jace that we had on the 8000. Honestly, I'm not sure many people actually use that, so I don't really see that as much of a loss. I think the new backup situation where it's automated, it's done automatically, is a much better situation um, for keeping you... Um, safe if things go uh, sideways. Our Ethernet is now gigabit. Probably not something that you're going to notice so much for most of the things that we do. I'm not sure if we're going to even if we were even saturating 100 meg on the 8000, but it's good to have that additional headroom there. And then um, we have some data recovery changes. Um, Wi-Fi, we now have a model with and without the Wi-Fi chip. Uh, the model with the Wi-Fi chip is coming out um, relatively soon, from what I understand. And um, the 9000 will also have also has Bluetooth and a uh, relatively nice change on our quality of life on the 9000 is we're now using USB-C for our debug. Um, I think everyone probably has a usb see cable in their bag now because their phone and likely their laptop are using it to 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 charge so um, you probably have a, a USB-C cable that you're carrying around with you already so that's a, a nice change not have to have that micro USB cable just for use for the show so that is the performance upgrade side of things and on the support side of things the software support is probably the easiest justification for why you would start using the 9000 now as opposed to an 8000. So Tridium isn't going to leave you hanging in the lurch here. Uh, 4.15 is scheduled for release in March of 2025. This will be a long-term supported release. Um, Tridium's maintenance uh, policy states that long-term support releases are supported for at least two and a half years. Tritium is already saying that they're going to take that a little bit further even with this particular release and say that it's supported until um, August of 2028. But this will be the last supported version for the 8000. So you'll get that support until 2028, but you won't get any of the additional new features that may come with future versions of Niagara. That also means that you're not going to get Niagara 5 the next big uh, release, really big release of Niagara, that will not be supported at all on the JS8000. So um, if you like to stay current, and by current, I don't just mean long-term support releases. Long-term support releases have their place, and I often recommend them for guys who um, know that they're going to put a job in and leave it there, and they don't care about the new latest and greatest features. Um, it's perfect for that. Because you get the bug fixes and you get the um, security related fixes and all of that jazz. Uh, but if you are looking to get the latest and greatest new features, you're not going to get those things after 415 with an 8000. JSON 9000 is your only path going forward to get those latest and greatest features. Again, you will get bug fixes and all of that uh, security related stuff. With 4.15 and all of the support that comes along with 4.15, if you are choosing to use an 8,000, but new features, you'll need a 9,000 in order to go past 4.15. So that's the software support of th side of things. Now on the hardware support side, uh, Tritium has said the last time to purchase the JS8000, and this is there's a caveat on this, and that is that assuming they have inventory of them, um, it's planned for December of 2026 as that last time by, and then the hardware end of, uh, support, uh, is planned for July of 2028. So again, we have, uh, quite a bit of runway here for, 
um, support. So Tritium is not going to leave you out uh, in the cold here um, without any additional support on software side or the hardware side. But we know that the end is near. And I feel like that's a good reason to start making your move over to the, to the 9,000 and uh, make that your standard going forward. So hopefully this video was helpful and informative to you. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, we've been getting a bunch of questions about this, uh, why I would use a 9,000 when the 8,000 is still available. Uh, I think the benefits of going with the 9,000 um, are there. Yes, the 9,000 costs a little bit more, but uh, the potential for new features and continuing support going past um, these dates that I mentioned here uh, makes it a pretty easy justification in my mind. So if you have any questions or comments about any of this stuff, you can leave them down below. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're in the market for any Niagara-related products, um, be, be sure to check us out at birdieprecision.com and store.birdieprecision.com. Um, if there's any other content or uh, things that you'd like to see around the 9000 that maybe would help you in getting switched over, be sure to leave them down below as well. And uh, thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.